What's up guys, it's Mike, the guy that does deep learning implementation into Forex trading, software engineer. And basically for this video, I got something special for you. And what I mean by that, basically we are going to use our machine learning skills to predict something much more important rather than changes of the Forex prices to make profit. So guys, we all know that right now we are in the first stage of pandemia. Okay, it's not pandemia, it's, but we are heading in the epidemia direction. So-called coronavirus came out from Wuhan, China, and it's spreading around the whole world, killing people. So right now we are in the global crisis, and people like us that know how to code and know how to use machine learning can contribute to this case by creating models that can predict the behavior of the coronavirus outbreak on the following days. So this is what we are going to do right now. Okay guys, first step, what we need to do? We need to get the data. So if you go to the Google and search coronavirus dataset, you will find a dataset that is being updated real time on the Google Drive. And you can also find a visualization of this dataset but we are going to do our own visualization and research. So let's download this data set and then open your Jupyter Notebook or Google Colab page. Okay guys, so the first thing we need to do, we need to do some imports of the libraries we are going to work on. So basically these are the libraries. Pandas, Plotly, Sklearn, TensorFlow, Kehas, Collections, NumPy, Matplotlib. The most popular ones. Okay, so we got we are going to run this, ah, let, let me do this correctly. Okay, so the imports are done. The next thing is to actually load the data set we downloaded. So for this case, you can just upload your data set into your Google Drive and then load it from that place, like I did in my notebook. So let's load this. Drive already mounted, okay, that's correct. Virus data. Let's move it into the CSPAW format and then show it. So, guys, how it's... So the whole dataset looks like this. So we got the date, the province state, the country, the last updated and the confirmed infections, the deaths, and we got also the recovered ones. Okay, so the next step would be actually to get some insights of this dataset. So let me run this one. From this side, we will generate the chart with the infections from, from the end of January till now. So basically, you can see the uptrend, the strong uptrend without any, without any corrections. I can also see that the momentum is very strong because if you look on this data set closely, you can see that the gap between each point is bigger than before. Okay, so let's go further. Next step would be to actually compare the data set the infections from China to the not China ones, because we know that China is the main source of this coronavirus. So if we look on the chart, we can see that the China is the main provider, like I said before, the main source of the infection. And the whole uptrend that we saw on the chart before is basically China. And if we look on the red line, basically the red line is not China infection. So Let's remove the China from the chart and we can see that this is how the not China infections are incremented by each day. So it's still big uptrend, but the momentum is much more slower than China. Okay, guys, the next thing, let's run this cell. So in this one, we can actually see all the not China infections split by countries. So from this chart, we can clearly see that the Japan South Korea and Thailand are the, the biggest places of the infection after the China. Okay, so the next thing is the depths versus healings. So basically what I did, I put it on the chart. Ah, let me go back. So what I did, basically I put it on the chart, the number of recovered ones and the number of deaths during that time. And what we can see here is basically that the number of deaths was rising rapidly faster than recovered ones, but we had the crossover a few days ago. So if we look here, 
basically you can see the green line crossing the red line and what does it mean basically from that time so basically from the start of november we are having more healed people rather than dead people okay so this is the chart this is actually very good news and it means that the virus is not so deadly like it was one month ago so moving next what do, what do we got? We, we got the percentage change between the deaths and the recovered ones, the healed ones. So let's run this cell, it's a little bit bigger. Okay, so as you can see here, basically this is the representation of the percentage change of the deaths and healings. So like you analyze the price movement price changes, you usually go to the re returns chart. So we did the same thing with this coronavirus data set. So we can see that at the beginning there was more deaths compared to the healings, but from the 1st of November actually that trend is changing and we got more healings rather than deaths. Okay guys, so right now what we are going to predict, right? So we are going to predict how those values will change. So basically how the deaths ratio will change, how the recovered ones ratio will change, and how the whole infections number will change over the time. And we are going to predict this. So let's run this cell. So what you can see right now on this chart is basically the number of all infections, the number of deaths and the number of recovered ones, the healed ones. And we also, and we can also see the deaths plus recovered ones. So basically, solved case of the infection so if we will remove the all we can see right now the deaths plus recovered the recovered one and the recovered ones and the deaths okay guys moving next let's calculate the returns series from all of those indexes so for this one i made some sales with code so as you can see, this is the pandas data frame that we got from the transformation. Moving next, let's run this one. Okay. So this is after the next transformation. We can see the all depths, all recovered ones, and the percentage change here right now. So you can see the infections percentage change, the recovered percentage change, and the death percentage change. Okay. So moving next, what do we got here? Let's put it on the chart, right? Okay, so the chart looks like this. So we can see right now on this chart that the percentage change, so the momentum was much more bigger and at the beginning when it comes to deaths and the rise of the infection, the spreading of the coronavirus. But after some time, you can see that the green line is going above the orange one and the red one. So what that means basically that the percentage change of the healed people is rising. So basically we are getting momentum into healing people. So like I said, it's very good news. So let's check what this data set got more for us. So when it comes to machine learning, we need loads of points, but we do not have it. We got like one month worth of data, let's check well, wait, we got even less than one month worth of data. So what I did, basically, I I took the difference between one day and the other day and split it by hours. So basically, I turned one data point to the 24 data points and the data set is much more larger. So for this one, I made this cell. As you can see, the method called increase data. Let's run this and we got much more data points 24 times more data points and as you can see we got the total infections number we got the number of deaths and number of recovered people okay moving next let's put all of those data on the chart right so let's run this cell with the plotly chart and as you can see the chart looks pretty much the same not that one like that one right Let's put all, yes. So as you can see, this one is split by days and that one is split by hours. So if you check every single data point, you can see the change during the hour. 
Okay, this is the recovered versus depths. It's working as well. Okay, guys, so the next step would be actually to calculate the percentage. And we can see the percentage change of the all three indexes. So right now it's time for the machine learning, deep learning part. So for that case, basically I prepared the special class that is responsible for training the LSTM network. Okay, so this is the class I got. Basically, train LSTM is responsible for the model training. We got two methods. The first one is called the create dataset. This one is responsible for transforming our pandas data frame into NumPy tensor, especially for the time series training. And the next method we got is so-called trained model, that one. And basically train model is responsible for training the deep learning model, creating this model. And then as a result, we got model prediction. So basically as a result, we got the prediction for the next 168 hours and 168 hours is just seven days. So basically when we run this class, we will get the prediction for the next seven days of this data set. So guys, let me run this. And as you can see, the training of the deep learning model just started. So let's wait a little bit for the model to complete the training. Okay, guys, so we can see that the model completed his training successfully. When we look on the RMSE error, we can see 0.06 and 0.01. So basically it's very good. When we look on the loss, we can see that the loss is actually decreasing after epochs. So yeah, that's a good sign. So right now, let's check how this data looks on the chart, right? So for that one, I created this cell. Let me run this. And this is what we got, guys. This is what we got. So basically, this uh, green line is basically the predicted result of healings, the predicted change of each hour of healings for the next seven days. The red one is the number of deaths. And the orange one is basically the number of all, of all infections. So what we can see right now, we can see that the number of deaths is basically going up and down, up and down. So the volatility of deaths after each hour is basically huge. And according to this prediction, it should be bigger and bigger. But when we look on the increase of the total number of infections and total number of healings, we can see, let me just make it like this. We can see that the number of total infections and healings is pretty much stable. So it's going in one direction with low momentum, but with stable trend. Okay, guys, so let's transform this data a little bit. For that one, I created a function called final chart calculation that is basically creating the, that's making calculation for me. And now let's check how the prediction looks for the next seven days of the coronavirus outbreak when it comes to growth. Okay. So we can see like this. Basically, guys, this is the great news. Why? Because when we look on this chart, we can see that the green line is the growth of the healings. And we can see that it's skyrocketing. So basically, this thing is predicting that the momentum of the healings will be bigger and bigger and bigger. The number of deaths will be pretty much going upside down, but the growth will be much more slower than the number of recovered people. And the number of infections will also go a little bit higher, but, but still the momentum will be lower than the number of healings. So basically, this prediction looks awesome. It doesn't tell us that the number of the coronavirus infection will be lower than before, but it tells us that the number of healed people will be rapidly increasing. So after few weeks, maybe months, we will get to this point 
that the number of healed people will actually exceed the number of the all infections and the coronavirus will be defeated. So let's check right now how does it look like with the real data set, right? I think everyone is curious about the numbers, the number of total infections after seven days, let's say. Okay, so the chart is generated. So what we can see right now, we can see that after seven days, we supposed to have 103,000 of infections. So right now I think it's around uh, 23, 24, 28,000. So after seven days, the model predicted that basically this number will quadruple and we will have 123,000 of infections. So I think having in mind the behavior of coronavirus spreading around the world, it's possible. Let's check the number of healed people. So after seven days, we should have 18,000 of healed people. So right now we got 1,000. So you can see the growth is huge. And when we look on the number of deaths, let's make a closer look. You can see right now that the momentum, that the trend actually is going up and down, up and down. So basically we will get to this point that we will have some kind of an average of deaths caused by coronavirus per day and it will not increase. So guys, this is the prediction and right now I would like you to have in mind that this is all maths. We are not taking into the consideration the social behavior of people, the connection, the flight connections. We just take numbers, make models and make prediction. And sometimes those models are actually accurate. So guys, anyway, thank you for watching this stuff. I know it's a little bit different than the videos I made before, but still it's somehow related to machine learning and prediction of time series dataset. And anyway, if you like those videos, if you like the stuff that I'm doing, just hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and share the video with your friends if you got friends interested in those topics as well. It really helps me stay motivated and do more stuff like this. If you have something in your mind, about this topic, coronavirus, or maybe you got requests on new videos, just put them in the comments. I will reply to all of them. And anyway, thank you for watching and see you soon in the next Monday.